folks, Dirty here for Premier Basics, and where is my like army? Okay, I understand. You don't want to press that until you've learned something. Fair enough. Green keying or chroma keying starts when you shoot. 99% of the success of your keying is defined at how your green screen and lighting is set up. I have a very old video where I explain how you can set up a green screen in your garage. Prepare to laugh at how I used to make videos, but the tutorial part is still relevant today. I'll leave a link below because in this video, I want to show you how the Premiere site works. So I have a clip of myself wearing a blonde wig as I headbang around. This is a nice nightmare, and I don't mean myself, <coughs> but the actual green key. Blonde hair is not easy, definitely not with all of that movement. So it's the perfect example for this tutorial. All right, first things first, with the clip selected, head over to the effects controls and locate opacity from which you want to take the pen tool. Draw a mask as tight as you can around yourself. We're essentially removing anything outside of the green screen. This type of masking is also called garbage mat, as you want to remove the garbage. All right, now let's look for the ultra key effect in the effects library and drag that over to the clip. Take the color picker to select the green in your shot, and I usually select the part closest to my hair as you want the best sample to come from there. Now, if you hold down the control key or the command key for the Mac users, you can see that the picker becomes slightly bigger. This takes a wider sample, which is oftentimes better. All right, now click with your mouse and good job, you've just pulled a green key. Now we're left with a lot of noise and one way of reducing that is by working with a denoiser before you're gonna pull that key. Unfortunately, the good denoisers out there are paid. And although I can highly recommend the one from Red Giant, I will not cover it as I only want to work with built-in plugins. So let's jump into the matte generation option. With these five settings, we can further tweak the keying. But first, we're going to change the output view to alpha. And this is gonna show the key Keying matte. Everything white is what we see, and everything black is removed. This makes it easier for us to see where we need to fine tune. The transparency is an overall keying control. I usually don't touch this as it affects the entire shot. The highlight controls the opacity in the lighter areas, which is oftentimes the leftovers in the green screen. So if we decrease that, you'll notice that the background is getting better. The shadow control does the same, but for the darker areas. I'm wearing a dark sweater, so by decreasing that value, I can remove the noise from there. However, this will also introduce back noise in the green screen. That's because I might have a darker area here in the bottom. So pay very well attention to that. The tolerance is again something that you shouldn't change that much. It defines the range of the key. We've already picked a bigger range when selecting the key itself. Finally, the pedestal is going to filter out the noise in the white areas. So this is going to be an important control. In short, you're going to work with the highlight, shadow, and pedestal controls the most. As a general rule, you want to make as little adjustments as possible. You know, just a little reminder, but if you already learned something new at this point, you can press that like button or not yet, but don't forget it. I'm still left with some noise in the whites, and although I could remove them by making drastic changes, it will affect the hair too much. So we're gonna fix that differently, but that's for later. First, let's find a background, and the best place to do that is on Storyblocks, today's sponsor. Now, it's a community-driven library filled with over a million royalty-free, high-quality stock assets, such as animated backgrounds. We can find different categories. Let's pick technology, and I really like this one, as it encapsulates my blonde hair. On the left, we have more options to further tweak our search and download an HD or 4K resolution. But apart from backgrounds, we can find so much more stock assets and various themes and jarrets. There are even collections so that I can download multiple clips from the same scenery. There are also tons of After Effects and Premiere Pro templates, visual effects, overlays, even music and sound effects, or illustrations, photos, and images. Storyblocks allows me to work faster, save time, and money without sacrificing on quality. Their enormous library always has something that goes in line with my creative vision. And with the unlimited all-access plan, you can download unlimited video assets, allowing you to try out different options to find the perfect fit. But there are also other plans, one for everyone's needs, so definitely check it out by heading over to storyblocks.com forward slash Premier Basics or simply click the first link in the description down below. All right, we can set the outputs back to composite and view our keying on my chosen background, which simply sits in the track below. Now, your keying should already look good at this point. We're still left with a little bit of green spill, definitely in the hair, but we'll deal with that later. First, let me go into the matte cleanup options. I do not recommend using these unless you really have to. We can choke the keying, which is oftentimes needed to get rid of that thin edge around your subject. For my 
keying that's not necessary, which means that my setup was good. Soften will soften the edges. This is oftentimes very tempting as it seems to make your keying better, but it doesn't. You want to use this if you're left with noise in the edges. Softening those edges can hide that a little bit. Finally, contrast, which separates the subject more from the background. And although that sounds good, things like hair should not be separated too much. We need to retain some transparency in there. So this option is good for when you're shooting a subject that is bald or wearing a hat, for instance. And finally, the midpoint controls where that contrast needs to be focused on. So these two options go hand in hand. But again, everything under the matte cleanup options are best to be avoided. A good green screen setup only needs the basic controls up here. All right, one last thing, and that is to remove any spill color. And although there are some options for that down here in the ultra key effects, I'm not going to use those as I find them tedious to work with and I never get good results. Instead, we're going to use Lumetri. Go over to the HSL secondary tab. Now for the color key, click on green as we're working with a green screen. Now I'm actually going to move my selection up a little bit to the yellow U. As I do that, you'll start to see the parts of my hair that are being now selected. That's because the yellow for my blonde hair is getting mixed with the green. You can also shift over to the other side if you notice green spill in the blue areas. It's always going to be a color around the green U that the ultra key wasn't able to key out. Once you have your selection on the bottom, we can then color grade that selection. Now either we simply decrease the saturation, which is going to get rid of that spill or you push some magenta in there, the opposite of green. So we're basically neutralizing that green spill. Which technique you use depends on your shot. Definitely try both and see what works best. Finally, you can increase or decrease the brightness of that spill. Usually that's going to depend on the background. In this case, a little darker works best for me. Your green key should be perfect right now, although I'm still left with that noise on my chest, which is mostly created because of that hair. This is a common problem, objects in the foreground that take reflections from the green screen. And the best way to remove that is by duplicating your clip, which you can do by holding down the Alt key as you drag it a track higher. Now from this duplication, I'm going to remove the Ultra key. You can leave the Lumetri effect. Then go into the Opacity property to take the Pen tool, and you want to draw a mask on the part that is still noisy. In this example, that's going to be my chest. This can be a very rough mask. Now depending on how much you move around, you might want to enable animation for the mask pads and adjust it over time so that you fall your movements. And you can see how well that fixes the problem. It removed some of those gaps. And before you think, Jordy, that is a lot of work for some simple green keying. Well, that is just simply how it's done. In fact, it even goes much further than that in Hollywood. Don't think that professional keying is a one-click solution. It's usually a whole team that works for days on several seconds of green screen footage to get it perfect. And since you're still watching, I assume that you've learned a ton of new things today. So let's hit that like button and perhaps also place a comment down below. Perhaps some feedback or something that you want to see in the future. That way you're pleasing the algorithm gods and helping the video to perform better. Thank you for that. And thank you for watching as well. Thank you Storyblocks for the support. So many thanks around here. And as always, stay creative. Now, check out the video here on my left for more. That one is pretty cool too. And if you want to see this beautiful face every single Wednesday, well then click the subscribe button down there. All right, take care guys. I'll see you next week.